from the Oak Wall Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, this is Jesse Oakley III, and welcome to the Oak Storm, where we provide positive words of wisdom for you. That's right, you, the happy people. Now, Monday through Fridays, I will give you a plethora of positive wisdom on my show, The Oak Zone with Jesse Oakley III. But today is Sunday, and it is time for the Sunday Morning Chat Series. And on the Sunday Morning Chat Series, I get to interview a plethora of positive people that are making a big difference in their community, whether they are speakers, writers, yoga instructors, Bitcoin experts, organ donors, animal rescue volunteers. If they're making a positive difference in their community, you will hear from them right here on the Oak Zone Sunday Morning Chat Series. And today, we got ourselves a fantastic show. Now, out of all the people I get a chance to invite to this show, there are very interesting professions as well as hobbies that are very interesting. And there is one called a zoolingualist. And <laughs> hopefully I said that right. <laughs> Zoo, all right, zoolingualist. And to help me understand what the zoolingualist is, Please help me welcome Zoolingualist expert, none other than Jamie Lee. Hey, Jamie, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? And thank you for inviting me here today. All right. Thank you for spending time for the Sunday morning chat series. And I'm doing very well. Good. Okay. All right. And without any further delay, let's chat. All right. First question right off the bat. What is a Zoolingualist? Well, if you look it up in the dictionary, a zoolingualist is someone that talks to animals. So like Dr. Doolittle. Oh. And I am not an animal communicator in that sense, but I do understand the language of animals and I communicate with them through energy. That is truly amazing, truly phenomenal to do that through energy. And my question is, how long have you been a zoolingualist? Um, you know, as far, as far back as I can remember, when I was a child, I was always able to understand the language of animals. And I think it was because I had a very difficult home life as a child. And then right before my 13th birthday, there was a flash flood that destroyed our community, um, took our home, every belonging that we had, all of my pets, um, my family was left with just the clothes we had on our backs. And since my birthday was so close for my birthday, I got a little kitten. And that's when I began to understand the power they have to bring us hope and healing into lives of humans. And so, um, you know, it's always been forever, but I opened my business in 2010, okay. um, so I could begin sharing what I've learned from the animals and helping the animals um, with other people. All right, fantastic. Now, when it comes to being a zoolingualist, what, so, what were some of the challenges that you faced? I think the biggest challenge um, that I faced was not believing in myself. Oh. So I remember telling everyone when I was little that I wanted to be a veterinarian and the response I got, now this was a long time ago, but the response I got was that girls couldn't be vets. Mm. Now that wasn't true, but okay. I believed it. And then every time I felt a calling to work with animals, uh, you know, I would talk to someone and they'd tell me, that's not possible. You won't make money. Um, it's going to ruin your love for your pets. All these things that negative things that I was being told that I took in and I believed. But um, eventually I figured it out and I knew that this was my soul's longing and that I had to just take a leap and trust. So if I couldn't do it as a career, I continued to learn as much as I could. I took classes. I've taken over 10 different Reiki classes from different teachers, um, including a Buddhist monk. I've studied an small animal massage, color light therapy. I just studied like crazy. And finally, I reached a point in my life where I thought, you know, I've done what everybody told me I should do, mm -hmm. but I'm not happy. 
So I'm going to do what my soul is telling me to do. And that's what I did. It's like, okay, we're going for it. And then that happened in 2010. And I have never regretted it. Oh, my, that was truly fantastic. Now, what were some of the best moments you received as a zoolingualist? Oh, there's a, so many best moments. Um, there's so many success stories with the animals. Uh, but I think they all have one thing in common. They come when I'm still. Oh. When I quiet my mind and I block out the world and I get in touch with that divine essence inside of me, that's when these moments happen, when I least expect it. It's not the moments when there's fireworks or, you know, that type of thing happening. Um, it's when an animal that I don't know comes up and asks me for help just by the way they position their body in my hands. Hmm. Um, or I see an animal that couldn't walk begins to walk, uh, you know, and even more so I notice it in me. When someone says something that in the past, normally it makes me, you know, it pushes a button and it makes me react instantly. Mm -hmm. And I hear them say that and I look at them with compassion and I don't react. And I, I just think to myself, well, that's their karma. I have mine is how I treat this person. So it's those moments, those quiet moments that I know a real transformation has occurred in my life and in the life of animals and other people. So those are really the best moments. All right. And those are fantastic moments. Yes, they are. Okay. Now let's say that you meet someone that just discovered what Zoolingualist does and are very interested in what one will do. Now, if you were to meet someone who is aspiring to be a Zoolingualist like yourself, what advice would you give that person? I guess I would tell them that they need to be in it for the right reason. Um, don't do it because you've heard the pet business is a multi-million billion dollar industry and you think you're going to get rich. Um, you have to be doing this for the animals, for the love of animals. And more importantly, you have to be ready to confront your own demons, your shadows that you have, um, because animals always mirror what's going on with us. So if we have deep-seated anger or worry, or we're just not happy in our life, animals are going to pick up on that. And they will sometimes, most of the time, just walk away from us. You know, if you're offering Reiki, but you're angry, they're going to say, no, thanks. Not today. Not from you. Um, one of my teachers used to tell me that you think of it as a lamp. So we're like lamps. If I had a lamp in front of us and no lampshade, it would just shine bright. And if I put one lampshade on, I could still see the light, but it wouldn't be quite as bright. But if I kept putting lampshades on until I had a hundred Pretty soon, you wouldn't be able to see my light, and I couldn't see my light. Wow. So the system, when we work with animals using Reiki and energy, we have to work on ourselves and remove those lampshades that are usually, you know, greed or shame or anger, those type of things that get put on us and dim our beautiful, bright light. So... If you're going to do this and you're going to work with animals because they will call you out on it, you have to be ready to take off those lampshades and let go of the things, your demons and your shadows. I tell you, you may fool some people, but you can't fool animals. That's absolutely right. <laughs> okay. Now, is there any reference or is there any other source that people can go to to know more about what you do as a zoolingualist? Absolutely. Um, people can go to my Facebook page and that is Jamie Lee Animal Bonds. And I post a lot of information, educational, fun things on there um, about my work with animals. Um, I'm on all the social media, um, you know, otherwise Instagram, all of those. Um, and 
so they can also go to my website and that is animal dash bonds dot com and if they really want to know more um they can sign up for like a free 15 minute quick call and you know they can just ask me anything they want to know about it i'm open to that so doesn't cost them a thing all right and for those people that missed out a lot of information do not fret because the links will be in the description below so after this interview you can actually check out the links for yourself and you'll be amazed with what Jamie has done. All right. Now we're almost at the end of this interview and time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? It does. I can't believe we're almost done. Oh my goodness. Now it, this section is called the shout out section. Is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to for making all of this possible? You know, there are so many people that have crossed my path and have helped me on this journey. Um, and I hate to name them in case I miss someone, but I have to thank my first Reiki teacher who started the whole thing. Um, and I especially have to thank my current teacher, Kathleen Prasad, mm -hmm. and then all the teachers in between. And the biggest shout out I have to give is to the animals because they have been my greatest teachers and my guides. All right. Now... There are so many people, actually, I call, I call my crew the happy people. And they are amazed and inspired with the story that you shared and the wisdom you shared as well. If you could talk to the happy people right now and offer them one more solid word of wisdom, what would it be? I guess I would say that all life deserves respect and kindness. And when we can show kindness, empathy, compassion to any being, whether that's a plant or an animal or a person who doesn't look like us, when we can do that, we're standing on the foundation of a meaningful life. All right. And what a perfect way to end this wonderful interview. And on behalf of all the happy people that are watching all over the world, I'd like to take this time to thank you for spending time with us here on the Oak Zone Sunday Morning Chat Series. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, now this concludes this episode of the Oak Zone Sunday Morning Chat Series. If you want more plethora of positivity, go to YouTube, type my name, Jesse Oakley III, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like, comment, and share these videos with other happy people that you know. And once you get to my YouTube channel, go and click the link it says Sunday morning chat series. And on this link, you will see me doing past interviews with positive people that are making a big difference, like my friend, Jamie, right here. And until the next time, happy people, you take care and have a great day. Bye. Bye, thank you.